Hey, hey, my crafty friends, I am coming to you with uh, Ways to Work It Wednesday with Tracy Reed Designs. Um, absolutely love her a themed days. It gets me out of my comfort zone sometimes, but this time um, I'm right in my comfort zone, I feel like. Uh, uh, this one is a numbers and I do a lot of scrapbooking with numbers for some reason. It is one way that I like to do things. I like to list things in scrapbooking. Um, I just feel like it is the easiest way for me to do that. So today I am going to show you two spreads on how to use numbers in your scrapbooking uh, pages. This one is going to be more of a like um, incorporate numbers, how to use them. You know, um, this is going to be like a collage of photos from a vacation that we took and then using numbers to correspond with those pictures. So definitely something that is obviously used in our community quite often. Um, but, you know, it's a very great way to showcase a a lot of pictures. So um, I actually haven't started this travel album yet, but this did um, inspire me to get that going here. Uh, this will be just like a highlights one. Maybe this will just go in our family album, I think, honestly, um, instead of in the travel album itself, where the travel album will be more of like breaking down stories and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this was a trip that we took last summer to Myrtle Beach uh, for my oldest son's baseball tournament. He went to a very popular baseball tournament called Rip Kid. This was our family's first time being in Myrtle Beach. Um, and so, and I feel like with the tournament, the tournament definitely takes up a ton of your time while you're down there. But we honestly got um, quite a few things um, seen right around the area. And so I decided to make a bit of a highlights page for that. Um, so taking uh, that first page is just merely four images put together. Um, I think they ended up being just over three. Um, what is it? Um, yeah, just just over three by four. Um, they were a little bit fatter than the normal three by fours. So just to fill that page since that was a full outside the page protector page of um uh which is you know your six by eight by eight point two five um and then the other page and that, that was because i i was going to have a little bit more room on one side uh but i didn't want two pictures to be cut in the middle for the seam so i decided just to spread everything out and then put the other two pictures a little bit smaller on the other page so then i used one of tracy reed's um signature tn papers cut it down just a little bit to have it on the side here worked out very well this is um from the anywhere but here collection um, and that is where also all of my little embellishments came from printed out uh six different labels six different hearts and kind of color coordinated them to that rainbow we always love a good rainbow and if you are looking for a good rainbow tracy reed is the place to go uh she has so many good rainbows in her collections so next thing is um this stamp set from carrie bradford is right now my absolute absolute favorite it just came out it's called iris unfortunately it sold out within just a few hours because um, really i would like to go back and get the uh iris xl i'm praying that she brings it back out at some point uh because it was such a good one guys so good um I'll, you're probably gonna see it so many times here in the next couple of uh process videos because that's how much i love it <laughs> i've already used it in my journal and in my planner used it everywhere anyways just for the title it's just gonna say um highlights of myrtle beach no highlights of vacation um i just couldn't fit myrtle beach on there i thought it would be if i would have went a little bit higher with that highlights um i probably would have put of myrtle beach but well we know that it's myrtle beach like it says it i think twice in the picture so it'll be okay um, but yeah so putting highlights for my main title and um, 
just using that archival black ink from close to my heart um pretty much finding out on this set because i had to i i they it comes out fine but it definitely i needed the reinker of this and unfortunately they are just not restocking that anytime soon um i guess they're having manufacturer issues like everybody else in the world right Using these labels, though, I did change them a bit in Photoshop. Uh, I think they were much wider um, and skinnier, more square than rectangle. And so I did do that a little bit. So I did warp the edges a little bit and, you know, you don't have as much color. I'm okay with that. It's not a big deal to me. Um, it's no big deal. I just cut them out with my silhouette because that is my favorite thing to do and just kind of zigzagging them down the plate or down the side. Um, and then color coordinating these hearts to the label and we will stamp the number also to the label so you know which picture we are talking about. So that first picture um, was the first day of the tournament and Kel Ripken himself was there. Uh, that doesn't normally always happen. Um, oh my, oh no, that was me. What shirt am I wearing? <laughs> um, anyways, and, uh, yeah, so I'm just putting those hearts down, um, in place of like a label type thing. And, um, yeah, so that first, so they all got to hear Kel Ripken speak to them. So that was pretty awesome that they got to do that. Second picture is of course, just seeing the fields for the first time. Third picture was the ocean was legit right outside our hotel so all we had to do is walk down and out to the beach um the kids loved that all of the mini putt putt golf um my kids are huge putt putt golfers <laughs> they love it and in this area there's 40 I mean, literally one on every corner so that consumed a lot of our time we did our first wax museum um, while we were down there and I did not think that the boys would enjoy it as much as they did uh, but it was super fun and uh, they are asking to go back to a different one and then unfortunately uh, we did not make it to the championship game we were one win away from it and uh, so we got an extra day that we did not think that we were going to get unfortunately so uh, we had an extra day to go around and we went to the Ripley's Aquarium uh, that day and my oldest son got to see his penguins. He is obsessed with penguins. So, All right, just bringing in a number set. I wasn't quite sure on the numbers and the numbers for this kit didn't weren't bold enough, I felt like. Um, so we are just stamping numbers. Um, one of my favorite, obviously, I use stamps in just about every layout. Um, this one is uh, an Allie Edwards slash Laura Wansick one. And all of my Project Life stuff falling around me. Um, I really need to get that done. And then yeah, just stamping the numbers and then journaling in the labels down. And honestly, that is as much as I did on the spread. I wanted it to be focused on the numbers, be focused on the stories, um, which isn't huge stories. I just did a limited amount of stories in those labels, but I felt like it definitely made it so that um, you knew what I was talking about only thing I would change about this whole layout is you're going to see here when I get to six, um, I put the heart right next to where the six is going to be on the label. Um, but I work with matte photo paper and pulling up that heart was just not an option. Unfortunately, you're going to see me go, Ugh, I didn't like the two sixes next to each other happens. Um, and that happens when you change your design when you come out of Photoshop because that's not where that six was originally supposed to be and when you deviate from your original plan, you know, that kind of thing happens. So, um, just using a micron so that it's, you know, waterproof and all of that good archival stuff um, to write out my journaling. I didn't do it computer. I just used my lovely handwriting. Uh, sometimes it goes well sometimes it goes bad <laughs> this time it was pretty fine <clears throat> and 
And then, like I said, I am going to go in with a very, that was the issue for me in this spread as I was getting on the long side, or not the long, the too many side, I guess, I don't know, of font, like stamped fonts, um, including, and I just, I was I was debating just leaving it highlights, um, but in the end, you will see that I do vacation. So, um, or highlights of vacation, I guess I should say. All right, so I'm going to jump on to the next um, to the next spread, uh, but I'm going to put you back into real life as I did a little intro for this one, and yeah, we'll get started. Hey, hey, crafty friends. So here is my next spread. Um, I actually did two. I had a lot of fun with this and I do use numbers a ton in my scrapbooking. Um, so this one just came natural. Actually, next month's um, ways to work it is also one of my favorites. So I signed up again. Um, super excited for this. Uh, um, do not laugh at this photo. Any of you. I was so super pregnant and chunky and had my first baby. <laughs> I was looking horrible. Anyways, um, really old picture, what, 15 years old at this point. Um, never really scrapbooked any of these pictures before, so I figured, hey, what the heck. Um, and definitely this one to use numbers as your title. Um, so a lot of us use obviously words and everything else um, for the title. This one is going to be his birthday and um, it's going to be pretty much was like the day that changed my life and all that kind of stuff um, and made me a parent. So let's get started on this. I am using um, Allie Edwards stamps because I wanted a really bold print um, and then using um, Tracy Reed's design um, love list, right? Yes, the love list. Using Tracy Reed's The Love List for embellishments, the paper. This is actually the blue plaid paper with the heart design over top of that. And that's because I took the heart paper and put it in behind my photo also because this there was a bunch of stuff that no one needed to see. Uh, you know, just random things, even though it would have been cool because there was like an iPod right here. Then, and obviously like we don't use iPods anymore. Um, so kind of cool, but you know, it kind of defeated the purpose. So, all right, let's start putting this together. There was two. So in a Tracy Reed design kits, you can do the digital scrapbooking kit, or you can get the printable, you know, a type. These two came out of the scrapbooking, um, more digital kit and they're called Ellie's, um, and they're supposed to be, you know, like the puffy sticker type. So what we're gonna do is put some glossy accents over this and make them into embellishments. And that's kind of how I make my digital kits work for me. So um, I am gonna do that real quick so that they have time to dry. Yep, time. It is the side, oh, probably goes like that. That's why, no, it is backwards. Because that's reading backwards. <laughs> like, why is it upside down? All right, anyways. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do that real quick. And, and then we'll get on to the stamping. All right, guys. So, yeah, usually I don't have too many issues with, you know, making these glossy accents. Uh, but today, unfortunately, I couldn't, or this day, I couldn't find my tweezers. Um, this page came together extremely quickly, so they didn't have much time to dry <laughs> Uh, you know, most of the time I am a, like, I did this a ton for my December daily. Um, and yeah, I would just put them to the side and everything would be fine. Well, today, you know, this spread really only took me even with talking. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, with talking and doing all of this stuff, it took me about 30 minutes to do. So, and that talking was probably a good four minutes of that. <laughs> so, um, and then the rest of the time, I think, honestly, of that 30 minutes was trying to heat dry these. Because um, I had a feeling that, um, you know, we were 
we weren't going to give it much time. The other part of it was stamping, and I thought that this would take the time it would need for those to dry, and it just did not. So, all right, using numbers as a title, guys. Um, so, like I mentioned, the spread, the title is 113007, which was the day that my oldest son was born, and um, I'm just writing about how he obviously changed our lives, and uh, <clears throat> pretty much was never the same after that, of course. Um, I think every parent goes through that. Um, again, using my archival black ink, I don't know why. I should have used Versafine, honestly, because I think my Versafine is juicier, um, and it probably would have went a little bit better. Um, but I am using my fake Misty um, so that I could restamp if need be. You will see that I do restamp, I think, on this three, and I think on a zero. I'm not positive. Um, I do wish I would have moved. I thought I had lined this up pretty well, as you've seen in before that I, um, lined up all these numbers. Um, yeah, I, I should have moved it over a, a smidge bit for, uh, uh, the ones, um, to fit that seven. You'll see here in a minute on here, just a little bit more. Um, but you know, for the most part, once I look at it, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you can clearly see that the seven's a seven. I just gave myself, gave those ones a little bit too much room compared to all the other numbers. Those zeros are huge. Um, and so fitting this all across here, uh, was definitely a feat. So, but I love these numbers again from Allie Edwards. Um, You'll see my main four places that I get good alpha stamps from are Allie Edwards, Carrie Bradford, um, uh, what's the other one? Heidi Swap and L Studio, pretty much. Um, those are my four big ones. Oh, other players in there are uh, Paper Person and. Yeah, paper person probably. There might be another one on there. I'm forgetting, but those are my main big ones. Um, but always love a good stamp set from Ali Edwards, right? <clears throat> All right. So yep. So you will see that I go off, but uh, that's okay. Like I'm not mad about it. So using the Love List kit. Um, from Tracy Reed Designs. I did do a bit of Photoshop work in this layout, as you will see. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned before, I I hate these pictures. I hated every picture um, that I took pretty much with my first one. Um, it, he ended up being a C-section unexpectedly. Um, I was just not prepared. I was young, um, had no idea that you could like walk in and not know that you're going to have a C-section and the doctor be like, oh yeah, you should have been told you would have had a C-section six months ago. <laughs> you know, it, it was crazy. Anyways, um, sat there in labor for nine hours before I had him also because other people's placentas and twins kept on coming. So long story short, I look like crud in every single picture that I had with him. And so I never really have documented these pictures. And I'm like, you know what? It, it, it needs to happen. Um, I knew I wanted to do this theme. Um, and when I thought about this, this was the biggest one that kept on popping up in my head over and over again. So, um, yeah, I think I've seen this somewhere where somebody used these stamps for a date, I think, or something along those lines. And yeah, it just was something that I wanted to do. So. We're doing that. So I use that blue plaid um, paper, the 12 by 12 paper out of that kit. And then she does have a heart paper also um, in that kit. And I pretty much converted that into an overlay, which is pretty easy over there on your layers palette. Just convert to um, overlay. And that takes like the color and everything out of it and just left those <clears throat> hearts. Now I knew I was covering up most of this, but I did want the hearts to kind of travel all over the paper um, because I used the hearts behind my picture. So I made, I chose my photo and then um, 
selected the subject is what it's called. It's very easy in Photoshop now. They've Photoshop has come so far since I started using it. Um, so I just selected the subject, which is myself and the baby, and duplicated that layer, put that overlay in between the photo and myself, the second myself layer. And yeah, and did it that way. Added a few embellishments like you can see me doing now. Um, she didn't have a clear brush stroke. Um, so that is why I, I created that in Photoshop myself. I just took a white paintbrush and painted over it, saved it as a layer. And then that's what I used for my text box. And then use some of her embellishments like that paper clip right there. Here I go testing these and being like, oh, this is not dry enough. It was all going well until um, I got to the pink one, which I thought was dry and then I dropped it. You're going to see me probably do that, right? Oh, I dried a little bit more just to make sure. I thought that this one was pretty dry. And then I go to put it on my backdrop and I drop it. You're going to see it, I think. I think I... Right. Oh no, that's what I did. Yeah, I put tape on it. I'm an idiot. Like I pushed down on it, put tape on it. It wasn't dry. It pulled up. But Thankfully, I was hiding it anyways, kind of behind the big one. So I was like, you know what? We're going to go with it and just hide it. Um, and it ended up turning out just fine. And that is pretty much what is going to happen. I do think that the bottom was a little bit bare. Um, of course, I didn't need to add any date stamps or anything because it, the date was right on top. Um, so I had the stamp already out because I haven't put it back. I use it a lot for some reason. And I just took out some very light gray ink from Distress Oxide and kind of just went over the bottom. It says for the moment, I think it says, I don't know. And that, you know, obviously my journaling is talking about being in the moment and being, you know, remembering how scared I was to take this human being home. <laughs> and yeah, and that's it. All right, guys, thank you so much for going with me with these two projects, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.